if even they do ride it below fiscal year 22, 22 levels, that's going to go over to the Senate. And the Senate's not going to go for that at all. So they're going to ride them higher. And at the end of the day, what's going to have to be passed is a compromise, like the debt ceiling bill is. But they're not going to like any kind of compromise either. So I think there's a lot of things going on that are going to anger these members that McCarthy really is in a bad situation because he can't make everyone happy. So I think we're just going to look and see how it plays out. But it really is not an ideal situation for McCarthy to be in. Welcome to Reporter's Notebook, where we talk to the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the stories breaking on their beats. I'm Jim Antle. I'm joined today by congressional reporter Reese Gorman. Reese, congressional business in the House has resumed this week. It has Talk resumed. a little bit about the dynamic among House Republicans right now. Yeah, so the dynamic is pretty bad at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of fraction within the party. There's So they held up a group of these 12, 11, 12 holdouts, blocked a rule from coming to the floor on a gas stove bill, which is really a messaging bill. It was right. supposed to be an easy Republican priority, um, just kind of get out there. And they blocked that rule from coming to the floor because they were mad about how the debt ceiling was handled, about, how, about Andrew Clyde being threatened by leadership um, that or Scalise more specifically mm -hmm. that if he didn't vote for the rule of the debt ceiling that his pistol brace bill wouldn't be brought up to the floor right so there was a lot of kind of animosity between the the factions within the house GOP conference so they held it up this Monday was the last time there was votes so this was last Monday mm -hmm. and or two Mondays ago and so there was a whole week where nothing happened on the floor so come around to Tuesday, they finally were able to come to an agreement Monday night. Tuesday they voted on a rule, it passed, and Wednesday they, they passed some bills. Tuesday they passed Andrew Clyde's pistol brace bill, which made everyone happy. Right. But there's still a lot of fraction. I talked to Representative Andy Biggs to the today as he was walking out from votes, and he said he's still not happy with the direction things are going. Mm -hmm. He says the kind of the motion to block rules and that tool they have is still on the table. If McCarthy continues to make them upset or they're not getting what they want, um, Gates also expressed to some reporters that he's also still upset with the way things are going. So it doesn't seem like anybody is really happy at the moment because I know when they made the agreement Monday night they came out and said that we made the, an agreement with Speaker McCarthy Gates said we made an agreement with Speaker McCarthy to renegotiate his power sharing agreement that he gave, made with us and back in the Speaker's race and also we'll have the fiscal year 2022 spending levels McCarthy came out and said there is no power sharing right. agreement and that I don't know if that angered them specifically because mm -hmm. they just, McCarthy's saying there's no power sharing agreement, they just keep saying there is. Well, so, I mean, it seems that a lot of this yeah. is about that during the debt ceiling, you know, sort of negotiations, yeah. Kevin McCarthy, the House Speaker, was, was sort of able to prove he could move some important legislation without the most conservative yeah. members of his conference. Mm -hmm. But that's only limited to really bipartisan legislation. Yes. And the, it seems that the Freedom Caucus and their allies wanted to remind McCarthy that there's lots of legislation he can't move without them. Yes, and that's true. Mm -hmm. And it takes five members to block something from coming to the floor, and they realize the power they have. Right. And they realize that they can, if someone's making them mad, all it takes is five of them, which within that group, there's always going to be five people willing to block something. They, right. And so. It's really been a struggle, and they're still saying this is on the table. McCarthy doesn't end up hold up his end of the bargain, so it's really just going to see how it's going to play out. But I think it's going to be something that happens throughout this Congress, because I mean, you get to the appropriations season, and whenever those bills start getting written, I guarantee you they're not going to be happy with some of them. Mm -hmm. And if even they do write it below fiscal year 22, 22 levels, that's going to go over to the Senate. The Senate's not going to go for that at all, so they're going to write them higher. And at the end of the day, what's going to have to be passed is a compromise, like the debt ceiling bill is, but they're not going to like any kind of compromise either. So I think there's a lot of things going on that are going to anger these members that McCarthy really is in a bad situation because he can't make everyone happy. So I think we're just going to look and see how it plays out, but it really is not an ideal situation for McCarthy to be in. So even amid all these stalemates, there are Republicans who are trying to do some legislating. No. Uh, you talked with Representative Dan Crenshaw. He has a, a bill that, that's close to his heart that mm -hmm. he's introduced. Talk a little bit about what yeah. he's trying to so do. So Dan Crenshaw, former Navy SEAL, and so he introduced a bill for veterans 
to, or for active serv duty service members to be able to use psychedelics to treat, PT to treat PTSD, traumatic brain injury, all these things that stem from your time overseas, your time at war. And what the bill would do is it would just, uh, it would allow the DOD to f fund a study to see how this works. Mm -hmm. And at this press conference, you had a lot of people out, and they were all talking about how good this has been for them and how helpful it has been, how it saved lives. Representative Morgan Luttrell was talking about how this literally saved his marriage and saved his family because he got back home from being overseas and didn't know what to do. Because mm -hmm. he had, and he was, he said, and his explanation was that the kind of the aggressive nature of being overseas and being deployed and because you're in a small group with a bunch of with, the, with your, these people with your teammates and then to come back and have to go back into the family life it's hard so he said psychedelics he went overseas to do it saved his marriage saved his family and so this is just a bill that people are trying to get passed and it has passed before but the senate killed it and so he's really hoping that the senate could take this up get in this year's NDAA and and save some lives. Finally, there's another bill that you talked to a Republican lawmaker about mm -hmm. that if it passed, I think would make the Chinese government pretty unhappy. It would, yeah. So Representative Andy Ogles, a freshman from Tennessee, introduced a bill that would rename the, um, the street from the Chinese embassy um, to honor the, Tianmen, the victims of the Tiananmen Square massacre. Mm -hmm. And it's going to definitely make some, if it passes, would make the Chinese Communist Party very, very upset. Um, but it's a big if if it passes. Obviously, it's a Democrat-controlled Senate, and so a lot of these things kind of don't always get they get held up. Mm -hmm. But it has some really like powerful co-sponsors in the House. Mm -hmm. It has Deputy Majority Whip um, Guy Reschenthaler. It has Stephanie Bice, who's a member of leadership. So people really are trying to do some legislating, even amidst the um, holdouts and the chaos that is currently going on in the House right now. Well, it'll be fun to watch. Thank you, well, Reese. Thank you. You can read Reese and the rest of our political team's coverage at WashingtonExaminer.com.